Hello and welcome to another edition of Keeping It Classless Labs. My name is Matt Oswalt and today we're going to be talking about Ansible. I've created two modules for Ansible with the express use case of performing an automatic configuration of zoning, and that is fiber channel zoning, on a pair of Nexus 5Ks. So zoning is interesting for me. It's a, it's a sort of a lengthy, time-consuming, and error-prone process just because of the fact that WWPNs are long addresses that are hexadecimal and there's a lot of them to type. I do a lot of greenfield deployment of fiber channel SANs and you know, selfishly for me, I'd like to get some of that repetitive task out of the way. That way I can get to do more interesting stuff. And even, even for folks that don't have you know, the same role, like they don't work for a VAR, it's still useful for deploying new pods, essentially. Lots of companies arrange their fiber channel SANs into pod relationships so that they have everything isolated. Uh, and this is hugely useful for producing zoning configurations. So what I'd love to do is show you a diagram of what I've been working on. So I've, like I said, I've created two Ansible modules, and these modules are designed to do two very different things. But in this Ansible demo, I've created a playbook that uses them in tandem with each other to produce a fiber channel configuration. So we'll start on the left side. First off, obviously, we have our Cisco UCS domain. We're trying to pull all fiber channel uh, all relevant fiber channel information from UCS. Now that of course is the WWPNs, but we also want to keep track of where those WWPNs match up to. So this module will also retrieve the service profile and the virtual HBA on that service profile as one basically big string, sort of a name of that WWPN. Uh, and that'll come in handy when we name our zones. So this module uh, is written by me. Uh, it's by no means a you know long-term thing. I mean, it's in GitHub. You can see the code, but I have a I have a longer-term module in mind that I'll be that I'll be posting about later. Uh, so essentially, it pulls data out of UCS using the XML API, and that's fairly that's fairly easy to do thanks to the folks at Cisco. We have a, a fairly robust UCS SDK in Python, although it's not uh, it's not officially out of beta yet. So I will say that. Uh, however, it works well enough. I can pull those WWPNs and pull them into a Python dictionary. And once that's done, it's a fairly trivial matter of converting that into a JSON file and writing that JSON file to the file system. So that's really all that module does is it logs into UCS, pulls the data that I tell it to pull, and it writes it to the file system in the form of a JSON file. Now, you could just leave it at that and maybe generate another module or another script that reads that JSON file to do stuff. But specifically with this use case, I want that data to be used to generate a fiber channel configuration. So for that purpose, I, I created a second module called install config. And very much like the first module, this is not something that I'm planning to support long term. I wrote it for the example I'm about to show you. I have another module I'm creating uh, for Ansible that will encompass essentially all NXOS configuration options and it won't use SSH, at least not uh, not long term. Uh, however, for the example that I'm showing, it will suffice. And essentially what this module does is it takes in that JSON, uh, as well as a few other arguments that we'll see in our playbook, and it generates a fiber channel configuration uh, from that JSON file. Now, the cool thing about this architecture here is it doesn't require any human interaction other than obviously the running of the playbook. So we'll see the playbook in a second. But at no point is a human being typing in WWPNs or naming them or anything like that. It's all completely generated automatically through these modules. And that's useful because there's really no opportunity for human error uh, here. So it, it results in a very clean configuration despite the fact that it all happens within a minute or so. Um, and now, obviously, I did forget to mention this last part. Um, the configuration that's generated by this module is automatically pushed via SSH to these Nexus switches. And this is one of the reasons why I'm not going to be using this module long term, other than within the context of this demo. And that's because I prefer to use a slightly more advanced uh, method, uh, NetConf, for instance. So more on that later. But for the context of this demo, I think these modules do a fairly good job of, of generating this configuration for us and automatically deploying it to a pair of fiber channel switches all with very minimal human interaction. So a few files to think about. And uh, I have in, uh, in my uh, Sublime Text uh, folder view here, you can see everything that's here. Uh, this project here, Ansible AutoZone, is the name of the demo that I'll be showing you. This demo is fully available. Any file you see here is all on GitHub, and I will provide the link uh, in the description. 
but uh, let's just give you a quick tour real quick. Library folder, this contains our two modules, so straightforward. Our get UCS WPNs module and our install config module. These are just Python scripts, but they're written in the syntax that's required for uh, to qualify for an Ansible module. Uh, so really, there's nothing to do with these. There's n there should be no editing of these or anything. You shouldn't even have to look at them. All you would need to do with these is copy them into your Ansible directory, which we will do here in a second. Playbooks is straightforward. That's where our playbook is. We'll take a look at that very shortly. Templates contains our FC template. Um, and really, there's no need to look at this later, so we can look at it now. Essentially, this is a Jinja template that forms the basis for our configuration. That way I don't have to write it out in a Python script. Here it makes it a lot easier for me to simply fill out this template using variables that will populate here shortly. Uh, and in sample hosts, uh, this is actually where we'll start, so I'll go ahead and click on that. This is a sample host file. Uh, my actual host file is actually over here, so um, the reason I've done it in two separate files is because I only have one 5K. But what I've provided in the GitHub repository uh, assumes that you have two so that you can see how the arguments look. So we'll use this for reference, but keep in mind that the actual one that Ansible is going to use on my machine is this one. Really the only difference between the two is the fact that there's not a second IP address under Nexus 5K. So for the UCS group, we have a single IP address, and I'm running this in, a, in, a, in the emulator. I have a virtual machine on another host that's uh, running that emulator where all of our configuration is. And I have a pair of uh, Nexus 5K switches in this, uh, in this group, Nexus 5K. And as you can imagine, the, the big thing that uh, is important to look at here is the IP addresses. Here's the IP addresses of each switch, and every time you run a play against this group, Nexus 5K, it's going to run it once for every single item in this list. So of course, for the UCS group, there's only one item, but that's just because we only have one UCS domain. We have two Nexus 5Ks, so of course, we're going to want to be able to differentiate these two IP addresses from each other. Now that's where these arguments come in. In my module, I've written in, uh, essentially uh, arguments that you can provide to make that configuration change between the switches, which is of course what we want. We won't see the same WWPNs logging into, or hopefully we won't be, uh, seeing those same addresses logging into both fabrics. We will only see certain addresses on certain fabrics. So my module is written to support this. I'm going to denote this switch as fabric A. I'm going to provide the VCN that I'm intending to use on this, on this switch. Uh, and of course, right now I'm only providing one, so this module or this example does not support multi vSAN deployments, uh, at least for now. And then finally, I'm providing a targets variable, and this is really just an array of target WWPNs. I'm hoping to create a, a third module that is able to actually hook into the storage array to generate this uh, programmatically as well. But for now, we're just providing this as an argument. So that's our host file, uh, and uh, we'll be referring to this host file, or rather these groups, in our playbook. So let's go to that playbook. So here in our playbook, uh, we have a relatively simple, simple layout. Uh, we're naming our play, obviously. We're giving it a name. We're saying, I want this play to run on the UCS group in the inventory file we just looked at. Connection local means I don't want to run this playbook on the remote device, which of course wouldn't work because none of these None of these devices uh, have Ansible installed, for one, uh, and really they're just switches, so that makes sense. Now, gather facts I've disabled just, frankly, because I haven't implemented anything regarding facts. Um, you can find out more about Ansible facts in the documentation, uh, but I've disabled this just because I'm not using them. Uh, this play, just like the other play, has one task, and that is to run the module. So the first play is to run get UCS WPNs, host... UCS user, UCS pass, all these, these are arguments for the module. So obviously this is very dependent on the module. Since I wrote the module, I'm, I'm obviously uh, aware of what arguments are needed, so uh, I'm specifying them here. Most of these are self-explanatory. The one that may catch you off guard is this one. This uh, double curly braces notation is actually referring to a special variable within Ansible. So the braces mean, you know, I'm specifying a variable. This variable specifically calls out the host name of the node that this play is running against. So in our inventory we have, uh, well, just one, but even if we had multiple, the play would run against every single IP address in this list. And kind of like the 5K group, we would have a play that specifies the Nexus 5K group, which means that the play would run, run once for every single line here. What this variable does, this inventory hostname variable, is it fills in, for every time it runs, it fills in the actual value being run against. 
So obviously the play will only run once for the UCS group, but for that one time, that variable will equal this value, 10.12.0.78, which is useful because I'm actually, I actually require that IP address within my module in order to connect to the UCSM uh, XML API. Uh, nothing else really interesting other than maybe output file. That's where our JSON file goes. Since it's a relative path to just output.txt, it'll appear alongside our playbook. Uh, and that's really it for the first play, uh, just generating JSON, essentially, based off of a, an existing UCS configuration. The second play is where we use our second module. Everything else is pretty much the same. Obviously, we're running against the second host group. Uh, but we're calling uh, our second module install config in this play. Same, same story applies here. We're going to run it once for every line. So if you do have two fiber channel switches, which you probably should, it would run twice. And for every single time, it would populate this value dynamically. Again, I don't have two 5Ks to play with. So for the time being, we're going to have to run with this. But it should run the same regardless. There's a few other interesting things that I've uh, required in this module. Um, as you imagine, in the inventory file, those, those variables that we provided, uh, fabric ID, VCN ID, targets, things like that, those have to make their way into the module somehow. And this is how we do that. So what we're doing is we're saying the argument that the, that the module is specifying, fabric ID, is located here. And it's referring back to the inventory file. So those values just simply get passed along into the module. And then the module does stuff with them. And the last real interesting argument in this module is the input file, which incidentally is the same as the output file for the first module. And that's just because this second module is ingesting the JSON file that the first module um, spat out, essentially. So if we want to run this module, it's quite simple. We are in the root directory, so let's go to playbooks. And we all we need to do is type ansible playbook and the name of the playbook. So right now it's running the first task. I am tailing the log file that we created. Uh, or actually I'm not, but now I am. So it's connecting. It looks like it pulled all of the VHBAs. And it generated a config based entirely off of uh, all of the templating information that we provided, the HBAs that it pulled down. And, uh, and so on and so forth. Let's go back to the beginning. I'll show you what I mean. So the log file, I've, I've done a little bit of logging here so that you can see what's going on. This is the get UCS WWPNs module. And the first thing it does is it pulls out all these WWPNs. And it, you, as you can see, it matches the name of the service profile. Like, for instance, here we have ESXi01. Uh, and then the name of the VHBA, VHBA A. Uh, and it gives you the WWPN that those match up to. Uh, and it says WWPNs retrieve JSON file created. So that's really all the first module does. And then it connects to the switch. And once it's connected to the switch, it pushes this configuration to it using Paramico, incidentally. Um, so it SSHs into the switch. And for every single line in this configuration, it sends a command. So if we were to look at the switch configuration now, we would see all of these lines present in the configuration. So as you can see, the Jinja template was filled out using every single WWPN in the configuration. So for every initiator we had, we generated a single zone. We made sure the vSAN that we specified as an argument was given. And the two targets that we gave as an argument uh, were provided. Scroll down all the way to the bottom. We've created a zone set that uses all of those zones. And finally, we've activated that zone set. So within mere uh, seconds, really, we've, we've not only generated a configuration based off of a live system. And I think that's the important thing. We haven't really... We haven't really pulled data out of a CSV, which is, which is very common. And actually, that's, that's, that's a great step in the right direction. But rather than even relying on something so static, we are ensuring that the configuration we're putting into place is exactly up to date. Uh, one of the things that I'd love to do with this, and this kind of requires netconf on the uh, Nexus implementation, I would love to be able to do sort of a true up configuration. Obviously, this is very conducive to greenfield installations, but let's say you have an existing sand that's essentially in production and you need to be able to add zones to it. 
a lot of folks they 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 like to they like to do that, that kind of stuff manually. But but again, I would say you know what if what if there's an error? Um, you know, it, it's really difficult to work with the economies of scale that we're seeing. Even even if it's in production, it, it gets to be tedious. So what I would really love to do is look at an existing configuration and be able to do a sort of a diff based off of what you'd like to do, and then provide the same kind of output you'd see like on GitHub where you see here's what I'm going to add and here's what I'm not going to touch. Do you approve this change? And then you could essentially edit the existing configuration rather than blow it all away and you know deploy a new one. So that's what I'm going to be working on next. Um, the takeaways from this is, you know, I would say play around with this in your lab, see if you like it. If there's any, uh, if you have any thoughts on this or maybe suggestions for me, please do let me know. Uh, I'm available on Twitter as Mirdin, M-I-E-R-D-I-N. Uh, you can comment on my blog, you can comment on this YouTube video, any way you want to reach me, that's fine. Uh, keep in mind that these are, you know, obviously just used for demo purposes. My long-term plans are to create a module for an interacting with UCS in general. So that would include this task, but so, so many others as well. Uh, and that, the same applies for NXOS, right? The only use case, the, the, the use case of, of creating a fiber channel zoning configuration isn't the only use case out there, of course. So I will be creating an Ansible module that does uh, a whole lot more than, uh, than just fiber channel. So keep that in mind. Heads up for those. Uh, I'll definitely be posting those in the weeks to come. Uh, and again, if you have any suggestions, please do let me know. I'd love to hear them. Thanks for watching.